welcome in here to the Sheridan Athletic Center here in Oakville for tonight's OCAA Women's Volleyball Championships. The second match of four. Number one is done. Humber defeats the Niagara Knights three sets to nil. Now we got number game number two between the Seneca Sting and the St. Clair Saints as tied up now at one. St. Clair are the away side while Seneca are the home side. Seneca and St. Clair both are 14 and four on the air. Seneca playing in the Eastern Conference while St. Clair plays obviously in the West. We actually did not see them not too long ago here at the Sheridan Athletic Center playing against the Sheridan Bruins. As Hawaiisman puts that ball in play. Set up now by St. Clair, attacked over. That one doesn't get down, but it will land in play and the point goes to Sen uh, Seneca. Now to serve for the Sting is their star player, Gamini Davina. Yeah, we were coaching, talking to the Seneca coach before the game, and he mentioned that Gamini Davina plays for the Cameroon national team. That's how good of a player she is. So pretty amazing player to have on your squad. And the St. Clair coach mentioned that there's not much they can do to stop her. She's just a really, really, really skilled, talented player. Actually sounds a bit defeated when talking about his team's chances, to tell you the truth. I, I, I believed he felt a little bit timid, and I respect the guy who can say, I see a lot of ways of us losing this game and not necessarily a lot of ways of us winning this game. It's the power of negative thinking if you listen to Bob, Coach Bob Knight, formerly of Texas Tech and Indiana. But at the same time, you don't want to have too much negativity because that rubs off on your players, right? Eh, there's a positive and negative, I think, to both skill sets of positive and negative beliefs of your team. Looking at the negative way of winning and looking at the positive way of winning. As now to serve for St. Clair is Haven Fournier. The Sudbury native. That ball put in play, pushed over there by Seneca. Played across and attacked over. Doesn't get down, however. Seneca plays it across through the block, and that will be a kill for the Sting. That goes to Stella Data, probably the second best player on this Sting squad, the fourth year of North York. And so now she's right at home because Seneca is in North York, which is the very northern part of Toronto. Happened to drive past it a couple of times. Seneca College, as that ball will be tipped out and a point will go to there, There's St. campuses Claire. Uh, out your way, I think on the way to where you are as well, so probably. As now to serve will be Krista Nickel. Nickel puts that one into the net and the point will go to Seneca. And now it'll be Stella Data to serve. She is the main veteran on this Sting squad. She is a fourth year. That up puts that one in play. Up by St. Clair, pushed across for Huggins. That one doesn't get down. Too close to the net, Hawaiisman couldn't dump it. But now up and free balled over. Chance here for St. Clair through the middle, blocked, and that will get down for this thing. And that's CL Villoria. Great job by the Sting, and it appears that the Sting have a pretty sizable contingent here today as well, similar to what we saw with Humber in the first game. Well, their size does not compare to St. Clair, however. St. Clair's size is almost unmatched in all of the OCAA as their top middle Hawaiisman is six foot three. As that ball put off the block. There of the sting, that will be attacked over right at the libero. And Kelly Rogers wow. from Waterloo is six one. Right. That's right, Kelly Rogers, she played her last game here in the middle for the St. Clair Saints is now to serve is Emma Clement, Emma Clements. I think the Seneca coach mentioned that Seneca is the smallest in terms of size and in terms of on-court contingent. Some game, some matches he was worried they wouldn't have enough players to field the team because they lost two of the starting Liberos at the beginning of the season due to injuries. One in ACL, one in concussion, another player due to concussion. So 
Still amazing Seneca's done as well as it has. Definitely interesting as now Richmond Hill native Villarreal will get a chance to put that ball in play up by Huggins. Set now for Huggins. That ball attacked over, dug up, however. No libero right now on the floor for the Sting as Dada puts that one at the net, but blocked by Huizman. That one again attacked that time by, again, the top player, Davina, and she'll get the kill. Again, listed as a libero on my sheet. I know she's definitely not. She's one of the better attackers here in the OCAA, but as you mentioned, she plays libero for her national team of Cameroon. And now CL Villarreal will get to put the chest, put that one in play. That ball put up, but up by Villarreal. Blast across again through the block. That one goes, but up. Played through the middle. Wise and blocked in her face. And that will be a point to the Seneca Sting. Fantastic Emily block. Steele. Fantastic point by the Seneca Sting. And a timeout taken by Coach El Turk. It's currently 9 5 in favor of the Seneca Sting. And I think Coach El Turk's. Tim, uh, timidity with us before the game has been shown by the Seneca Sting team. As much as they dealt with injuries, as much as they've dealt with all of the tries and tribulations of having a competitive varsity team, they are with this St. Clair squad. Well, that's exactly what I was saying. If you your coach appears timid and, sh and nervous, it's going to rub off on the players. And St. Clair is playing a very timid style. And I think that is related to a lot of what the coach was speaking. Coach El Turk was saying before the game, right? You have to play with no fear and like you got nothing to lose. And that's the way St. Clair is, that's the way that Seneca's playing right now. See, and I'll I'll use a, a, a good wildness adage. You always should be in fear of your opponent because they always could do something miraculous. But uh, for sure, I'm not saying don't be in fear of your opponent, but you also don't wanna, you know, p play like you feel like you're gonna lose, right? You always want to have confidence you're going to win. And now back to serve again are the Seneca Sting. Villarreal uh, again to serve. That ball up. By Libero Stocks. That one over the block it goes, but it's up, and we free ball over by Stocks. Up again, though, for Seneca. Block off the net, but that will be another point to Davina. I think we already know who the player of game is going to be for Seneca if it keeps up this way. Definitely going to be a big game, as you see us here on your screen. We finally got the GoPro working in go. front of us. We finally got a, a little cameo uh, had, 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 to, had to give uh, Ian his props there as he stands up beside us. I'm going to shout out every crew member because I got all of their names on a piece of paper so I can't forget. So hopefully I'll shout out most, if not all of them, throughout this three-day tournament. As that point, we'll also go to Seneca to help 11-5. Just, and just talk more about Gamini Davina. She leads Seneca in points, in kills, and aces, and digs. So she is the leader in four out of the six categories. So pretty much a brilliant offensive firepower who is kind of unstoppable, as Coach Alturk was mentioning to us earlier. And then that is Geneva Huizman there with the kill. And now to serve is probably St. Clair star player in Kiana Huggins. The second year out of London. She puts that one in play. Up by Seneca, will be free balled over. Stocks, Clements, across, off the block there. That was Chantel DeVlute. Passed again, though, up by Stocks. What a dig by Stocks. They are able to get there, and they will be able to free ball it over. Allerton there with the two hit. It's up. Stocks with a chance to set it now for DeVlute. That one does not get down. Again up for Seneca, and that one attacked over. Stocks asked again, set it. Again goes to DeVlute. DeVlute will push it out of play, and the point goes to Seneca. And now to serve for the Sting is Brooke Allerston, the setter for this squad, the North Bay native. So far away from home is Allerston. Very far. Although not as far as Lucy Fan from Taiwan, 
or Basti Parillo from Chile. And fa Fan actually does not happen to be here tonight. One of, I believe, the starters normally for this Seneca Sting squad, at least from the games I happened to watch before today. That's now who Iceman will get a chance to serve. That ball put in play. Put up and pushed over by Dada, up by Huizman. Again, pushed over. Another chance here, pushed across. And then at that one goes, that'd be Fournier, and the point will go to the home side. At least listed home side here tonight, as currently up are Seneca 13 to 7. And it's interesting that these two teams have a similar, have, as you mentioned, the same record, but. Yet the St. Clair coach, as we talked about, was still very timid and very negative about his team's chances of winning today. And maybe that's because he knew that Seneca had struggled with injuries a lot this season and really is better, better, better than its record shows. I, I even think it's a respect for your opponent knowing they come from maybe a less uh, seen as a lesser conference in the East and knowing that the Sting are not going to be a pushover. They're not going to be taken lightly. And I think they've shown why early here today. Well, only one other Eastern team here this weekend so far. It'll be the Durham Lords against Sherrod, the Sheridan Bruins at 8 o'clock. They're the only other Eastern team. They are the number one seed in the East at 17-1. and one. So we'll see if either of them at this point will be able to make it to a semifinal, which will mean a medal game on Saturday. That ball will land just out of play. And now Seneca up 15-8. Can you guys change the color on the graphic? The Saints are the green and Seneca is the red, just so you know. As now to serve for Seneca is Emily Steele. You have the color switch. St. Clair should be green, Seneca should be red. Good eye, good eye, good eye. And that, thank you. As good that eye, ball goes into the net for the Sting now to serve is, before I look at my wrong sheet here, Haven Fournier. I know most of the St. Clair squad, again, this was the last one of the last regular season games for the Sheridan Bruins this season. As that ball put up, pushed over, and the kill will go to CL. CL, whose full name is actually Clarence, which is the first time I've heard the name Clarence for a female, so CL is what she goes by. I, I made sure I run, ran down because I, I knew they called her CL in the broadcast. I had watched between Durham and, and Seneca, and I wanted to make sure I asked her if that was a preference or if she did have a first name she wanted to be called by and she told me CL was the preference, so CL is what I will call. Always a good idea to check. Villoria, as she has been dominant for Seneca early here, as now to serve for St. Clair is number seven, Krista Nickel. That ball up. And that will be not over there. Push, ball pushed a little too far there by Davina. And the point will go to uh, go to St. Clair. The Saints will now serve again. Nickel. That ball sent long. And the point goes to St. Clair. And they're battling back here against this Sting team since that timeout. Especially. Seems the timeout actually worked wonders for the St. Clair Saints. That ball put in play. Set up by Allerston. Up for Dada. And that will be down for Stella Dada. And now Dada will serve again the fourth year sting. She is the one of the only veterans. Everyone else are first and second years respectively. She is the only fourth year. No fifth year, everyone, as you mentioned, everyone else first or second year. That ball sent looping right at Stocks, up by Clement for Wiseman, and just could not beat that one in play. As now Dada again will serve. 18-12 currently in favor of the listed home side. Too close to the net there as that one cannot get down for the Sting. Attacked over by Devlu. Up by Dada. And we have to be free balled over now. That's Camilla. Up Clement. Fork Huggins through the block. And it will get down in favor 
of St. Clair. Davina blocked at the net there. That's who Wiseman and DeVlute. And be free balled over by Camilla again. That ball gets up. Clement to DeVlute. And it will cross the net. And DeVlute with the kill. And again, St. Clair started off with a rocky start. And now they're easing their way closer and closer to the Seneca Sting team. Really nice job by St. Clair. Really making a comeback in this game. But we also saw Niagara do that in the first game and it ended up not going so well for them. So we'll see what happens. And Clement puts that ball in play. Allerston puts it across for Davina. That one to close in the net, but blocked by Hawaiisman. And DeVlued, and Davina got a little too close again to the net there. She's crossed a couple of times here. A timeout is taken by Seneca, and I think Coach Tong knows that this is getting a little too close for comfort. Coach Jimmy L. Turk looks like, in my opinion, a genius with that timeout earlier in this set to be able to reset his team, and I think it's really worked here for the, the Saints. Again, Seneca now only up by three, 18 to 15 currently. Haven't been able to pull away from the St. Clair team late, which is what you need to do. You can have the biggest lead you want early, but if you can't pull away late, it just doesn't reach work particularly well as you're going to get a chance to see us. Hello everyone, I'm Spencer Byers alongside Rachel Bishop. Rachel again, big game between these two sides, both 14 and 4, very big game. What do you expect we will continue to see here tonight between these two sides? I think we're going to see some really good volleyball as we're seeing right now. Uh, you mentioned, you know, we've talked to pretty much ad nauseum about Gemeni Davina. She's pretty unstoppable, but there's also Stella and Dada who's pretty amazing. But I think St. Clair is showing a little bit of a pushback after that kind of defeatist opening, if you will. Uh, and I think Seneca really needs to, to take, you know, take it to them. I think the fact that they don't know each other maybe could be a bit of a hindrance because they're not familiar with what the other team's going to do. So going in blind, kind of feeling things out, a bit what I expected to see in this first set so far. Back again to serve is Clements. Again, thank you to Ian and Mac. I believe they've been working strenuously to get that GoPro to work. And now we do have the colors right. Again, thank you, Control Room. Golly, the students here today are working their tails off, and I appreciate every single one of them. And I got all their names written down as a kill there. We'll go to CL. I do want to mention my name is spelled wrong in the graphic. R-A-C-H-A-E-L. As now... It'll be served over by CL, up by Clements, across for, look at the Hawaiian, but free ball over by DeVlute. Pushed across, blocked again, but the kill will go to Davina. I believe there's a net violation there too against St. Clair, so no matter what, it was gonna count, as again, back to serve is CL Villaria. <laughs> Uh, timeout taken by Coach Al Turk. Five points separate these two sides now. And his first timeout worked really well. We'll see if Coach Al Turk's second timeout work is just as fruitful. Only one timeout now remaining in this first set, currently in favor of the Seneca Sting. Definitely a different mentality, if you will, between the first game and second game. Humber didn't take one timeout, they didn't really need to. Uh, Niagara took all of their timeouts every set as they were, no offense to Niagara, most normally behind <laughs> in the middle of the latest sets. These two teams very close, know they're very close record and personnel wise. And I think they do both know each other's strengths which might be, might be causing their timidity on both sides is Seneca knows how big this St. Clair team is with Hawaii's been in the middle and Rogers on the bench, and Hearn on the bench, and all these extremely tall girls at the front of the net, and, and St. Clair knows that, you know, Gamina Davina is fantastic, and Villaria is fantastic, and Dada is fantastic, and know they have lots of skill around. So, you know, both teams I feel like are a little bit timid of knowing what the other team can do. Not necessarily playing a team in front of them, knowing the more idealistic of both sides. 
as Villarreal puts that one in play. Huggins attacks that one right at. CL on the point goes to St. Clair. And out to serve is number four, Kiana Huggins. That ball put in play at right at Dada, up by Allerston, it'll be free ball, or just tapped over there by Dada. Stocks, Clements, through to Hawaiisman, blocked at the net by Emily Steele, the Oshawa native, sent that back where it came from. Return to sender, stamped on that one. As now Brooke Allerston will serve. Again, the North Bay native. Talk about far away from home. Playing for Seneca here down and now playing at Oakville here at the OCAA Championships. That attack through the net. That was Fournier blocking the net again. There's the size and effect for Hawaii's men and Devlut. Devlut, not small either. The outside hitter out of Wyoming, Ontario, is six feet tall. As now out goes Hawaii's men not to serve. In comes, it looks to be Gabby Arbor. I didn't even know that we had a Wyoming and Ontario. I also didn't. I also <laughs> I did not know we made that it. today. There, there, we, we found that out last time the St. Clair. We also found there's a sandwich secondary school. A sandwich? Oh, sandwich. yes, sandwich secondary. Yes, I. we found out that also does exist in that area. So we had a lot of fun when this <laughs> Windsor side came here the first time, and it's continued here today with this St. Clair team back again. Three players from Sandwich Secondary School. They also have quite a few men's players from Sandwich. There you go. Must have a good volleyball program. I, I would have to expect from LaSalle as that ball is up by St. Clair. Attacked over by Fournier. Allerston, though, plays it across for Davina. No touch. And the point will go to St. Clair. And Davina's not happy about it. And Coach Tong also, or Coach Fong, pardon me, not happy about that either. Thought there definitely was a touch there, did Anthony Fong, head coach of St. Clair in his third season. That's now to serve for St. or St. Clair is Gabby Arbor. That ball pushed over. Up by Arbor, set now by Clement for Devlu. It goes off of her, and the point will go to Seneca. The block, and now the serve will be Gamini Davina. Now Hawaiisman comes back in, but will immediately rotate out for libero Michaela Stocks from Sandwich Secondary School. <laughs> the aforementioned Sandwich Secondary. The infamous, if you will, Sandwich Secondary School is Stocks. Well, that one towards the net. You can't be not infamous with the name Sandwich. <laughs> Everyone would know Sandwich High Secondary School. Because I would have went. I would have been the first kid in line to get in Sandwich Secondary School. I would have applied. I would have sent a resume. <laughs> As now Davina will serve again. Two points separate Seneca from a set and game victory. Or set, pardon me, one victory is Davina with the ace. I think that's the first ace of the night for Seneca. And they do their little celebration. It's now they're one point away from a set one victory. Yeah, she's already getting her celebration dance ready. That ball put in play up by Huggins, set now for Fournier through the block. It does not get down, however. Attacked over by Davina from the back row, but that one set long. But now St. Clair's got to be perfect as coming out is Devlute coming in to serve is, is Libero, but not dressed tonight as a Libero, Alexis Stewart. Again, one of the many Windsor slash Windsor area natives on this St. Clair team who do hail from Windsor. That ball put in play right at the libero, but played up for Dada off the block, up by Stocks. Clement dumps it at a two hit, up by Davina. Allerston, cross for Dada again, up by Stocks. Clement couldn't get there, and the first set goes to the Sting. Definitely what, what we were expecting though, a much closer game than the first, and what we thought going into this one. Definitely razor thin margins between these two sides and I think a better start for St. Clair would definitely pay dividends going into this second set. The hole they put themselves in early was very hard to eclipse. They did get close a couple of times but were never able really to get rid of that early lead that Seneca was able to get a hold of but St. Clair was able to get 
a lot closer than they started off with, Rachel. So definitely important that they have a better start in the second set. 100% agree. I think that the fact that they started off so slow really kind of hurt them. And I think if they would have started off the way they finished, they maybe even would have won or could have been much closer than what we saw. Definitely a lot lot closer than, than what we just saw, even though five points is not that far off. No, no it's not. Because you, yeah, you have right. to win by two, or more, by two points or more. So losing by five is not that bad when you really yeah. think about it that way. So again, St. Clair got a battle back, and I think they have again. Better start. Better start, I think, is the most important thing going into the second set is let's not go down eight, seven early and have to battle back to get us within four, within three, within five to then go to the end of the set. Because, again, they did show that resiliency in the latter, latter half of that first set to be able to come back. I 100% agree. Show that confidence that they just had, and I think hopefully we get something longer than three sets because I don't want to see three straight sets again. That was, that's not the best, so hopefully four or five. And Seneca did, I think it was, one of the two teams did go to five sets in its, in its last game, so hopefully we that, see that That again. was actually Niagara against George Brown where Niagara did defeat George Brown. I believe they were technically both the four seeds or five seeds coming into that one. Or right, actually, no, right, pardon right. me, Niagara was the sixth seed while St. George Brown was the third seed off the top of my head. So George Brown, one of the other teams that the East might have been able to offer up, but were not able to beat that Niagara Knights. Niagara Knights team we just saw lose to the Humber Hawks in their first round matchup. They now will be heading back to the Niagara area. And Humber obviously will stay as everyone I say would expect for the second straight year will be coming to at least a medal game. We'll see which one that will be tomorrow. They will play the winner of this one between the St. Clair Saints and the Seneca Sting before I mess up the names. We also again at six and eight o'clock tonight do have some games. Sheridan Bruins against the Durham Lords, the 17 and one Durham Lords, the first team in the East, the Durham Lords against the Sheridan Bruins who only had three wins this year. But I have a lot of confidence that Sheridan with the way they ended the year will be able to give that number one seed a real run for their money. We also do have the reigning silver medalist at last year's OCAA Mohawk also in action at six o'clock. Durham Lords, that's an interesting one. Also, it kind of surprised me to them that they were called the Lords. Uh, not no, Again, not one of the normal names you'll find uh, of team names, if you will. Definitely not a conventional one is the word I I'll used use. to play hockey against the team from King City, and King City was called the King City Cavalry. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> you like spell that it, one? Spell it with a K and we're perfect. It was with the C. Oh, of course <laughs> it was. But Peterborough Ice Cats with the, was with the K. You know, you got the key C, the, the KCK. Oh, and pardon me, it's Mohawk versus Conestoga. I could not place who was playing Mohawk in the next game. It is Conestoga. Okay, Who have been go. one of the better teams in the Western Division. I'd say they've been one of the surprises because their head coach won Coach of the Year in the OCAA and is up for it, the CCAA Coach of the Year. So... This Conestoga team is up in the scoff at second in the West High with St. Clair at 14 and four, while Mohawk was only 11 and seven. But again, Mohawk took Humber to, set, to five sets earlier in the year, so that Mohawk team has nothing to underestimate, and they'll know it playing them twice this year. That should be a good game too. Probably another close one, hopefully. I definitely would expect that as an ace early for Kiana Huggins as St. Clair get on the board early, and that. Already is a better start than they had in the first. And since we're continuing the crew shout outs, thank you to the crew for fixing my name. Those in the control room, much appreciated. I'm going to give them as many shout outs as I can because without them, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. I'd be on my couch or in my, in my classroom, sadly. So I'm happy to be here and not there. That's up by Stocks. Clements puts that one up for DeVlute. Up by the Sting. Put it in the middle for Stella Data, right up by Huggins. Clement again, that time up again for DeVlu. Pokes it over, and the kill will go to Chantel DeVlu. And now back to serve again goes Huggins. Ball attacked through the middle, and that will be a kill to Emily Steele. Chantal DeVlut ranks currently 14th in the OCAA in kills per set at 2.49. So, again, a very dangerous attacker, while Gamina Devia, uh, Davina is second in the OCAA at 3.85. So, again, very dangerous attackers on both sides. 
And I almost forgot to mention Kiana Huggins, who actually is first in Saint, for St. Clair at kills per set at 2.84. She's currently seventh in all of the OCAA. Is now to serve is Brooke Ollerson, the setter, the first year for the Sting tie 2-2. That ball just gets over. Stocks got there, but not enough on it. And the point will go to Seneca with the ace to Allerston. She'll go back again. That one again just gets over the net. Talk about a carbon copy. That looked identical to the last ace she got. We'll see if she can make it trips. Three of a kind. Four hours, then we'll see if she can do it here. And interesting about the libero that's on right now for Seneca, it's Amherstia Villagas, who went to Silverthorne Collegiate, and she's actually the third string libero, or the third libero, if you will, because as the coach mentioned to us before the game, the first libero is out with a is out with a year for an ACL, torn ACL. Backup is out with a year due to a concussion. So great chance for um, her Stia to show her stuff and try to make her case for a spot on the team next year. Definitely a good chance to showcase your stuff in the biggest tournament most of these teams will play. I do want to mention that the gold medal game on Saturday at I believe 7.30, no matter who wins or loses that one, they both will go to the CCAAs. Obviously, if you win versus you lose, you'll get better seating, at least that's the thought, as Davina will get a chance to serve. So the OCAA will again have two teams going to the CCAAs to vie for a Canadian Collegiate Championship. As now to serve is Chantel DeVlu. And that will be held, held in BC this year. Such a Nanaimo. Such right? a beautiful. Uh, actually, no, Nemo's not a bad place. It's right on the uh, right on the uh, ocean. It's the uh, I'll say border, but it's the boat you get onto the island. I've been to Nanaimo a couple of times. It's not uh, mainland. Well, it's mainland, but it's the it, you take it to get to the island. Okay. It, it, it's the port, if you will. Got it. As Emily Steele will now serve for the Seneca Sting again. Up right now, our Seneca six to four. Do you know what the little tape on the ear means, Spencer? I've seen a couple players on Seneca do that. I've never seen that before. That is a trick I learned in softball. If you have a piercing you cannot remove, you have to tape it. Because it cannot oh, fall out. That, that, that is a piercing. Because I've seen I've seen girls do that in sports, but I, I didn't know that's what this was. Yeah, okay. that, it is always for a piercing that they either cannot remove or do not want to remove. That's so right, because they're, they're not allowed to have piercings in this. You're not allowed to have piercings in any athletic sport. You're allowed to have change You can in hockey. Well, like that's wearing a helmet. You're it can't fall out of the ice. In sports where, you know, you're not wearing a helmet and it can fall out and you can fall on it or lose it or, you know, what what have that's you. Right. you they want you in, they yeah. want to ensure that you, you know. The same thing for dance too. Yep, of course. So it's very, very similar. As now to serve for St. Clair is Fournier. So sorry, you said you learned that? Softball. Some some of the guys on my oh, team had okay. piercings and didn't want to get rid of them, so they taped it. Or they can't take them out. Yeah, or can't take can or can't or won't. Yeah. I won't I won't argue either way. Right, yeah, yeah. All I know is they didn't and they had to tape it. That was that was the rule I was explained. As a eleven year old as a kill goes and, to and Keanu soccer Huggins. It doesn't matter because I've seen player I see I put girls I played with and I see women on the national team. Like if they're like studs, it's fine. It's just like if they're bigger piercings, it's an issue. I also think it depends on the level. Because you can't wear chains at, you know, house no, you league level. You can't while, wear chains in the World Cup either. Well, while, while at baseball, you see guys walk up with four different chains as that ball will go into the net for... You can't wear chains in the NHL. Fournier. As well. well which makes sense. They, makes they, sense. They, they shouldn't let baseball players wear them, but they are allowed, <laughs> and if you're allowed, you might as well do it. <laughs> I mean, baseball players All do, power a to of, you. do a lot of things. So. I think even ball players, basketball players get to wear chains as well, which I, I still so. find ridiculous. So that will kill, will go to St. Clair. That's Krista Nickel. The Hamilton native, a little closer to home. Is Krista Nickel, as now to serve is Nickel. The 5'11 middle. Puts that one right at Stella Dada. Too close to the net, Hawaiisman says thank you. Put that down, 8-8. 
and this is what we talked about in the intermission between the two games, right? My, between the two sets. Much better start for St. Clair, and now it's 8-8. This is the kind of game that we thought we would see from these two sides. That ball into the net. I'm not sure it was blocked, but... Villaria couldn't get that one through, and the point will go to St. Clair, and they take their first lead, I believe, of, or I, they take their first lead since the beginning of this second set, and in this second set, they've gotten their first leads of the night. The St. Clair team does average 1.37 blocks per set, which is a sizable amount compared to St. Clair, only average 0.97. That ball up, set now by DeVlute up for Huggins, blocked up by Clement and two hit over by Huggins. Set now for Villarreal, and that's a KO for CL. And just to mention about blocks, Seneca actually leads the entire OCAA in block errors with five, so. Blocking is not the strong suit of the Seneca squad. It's offensively, you know, very good offensively, not as strong. And you got to wonder how much of that is to do with injuries, dealing with so That's many right. players having to rotate That's around. That's right. Playing out of position, right? Playing with people they're not used to playing with. It makes a difference. As that ball goes into the net, and now to serve for St. Clair is the setter tonight, Emma Clement. The first year out of Windsor. One of the smaller players on the floor. She's only five foot four. Won't make, will make me feel, you know, average. Nice for a change. Not around all the towers that I'm getting so used to, especially with the men's sides. As now again goes Villaria to serve. 10-10 currently tied. That ball parade at Stocks. Clements up for Hawaiisman off the block, and that ball even lands in play, and the point will go to the Saints. And now coming out will be Fournier coming in, will be Ashley Maliko, the second year out of LaSalle. Five ten outs a hitter. Again, the, the length of the St. Clair team is just almost unmatched by almost any team in the OCAA. As that's a great two hit there by Brooke Allerston, and that's a point for Seneca. She only averages if I quickly look, point, as I run to my stat sheet, point four six kills per set, and that's already one. And that one up by Stocks. Clements up for DeVlute through the block of Davina, and the point will go to St. Clair. And now to serve is Hawaii rotating back in is Nickel. Again, that was another failed block by Seneca, something that we had just mentioned. Seneca struggles with. So maybe St. Clair has found the chink in the armory here uh, for the Seneca Sing and, and is utilizing that. I also want to mention Geneva Hawaiian is a first year player for this St. Clair team. So she will be a problem in the Western Division for years to come as the block there by St. Clair. That is Nickel and DeVlute. 13 11 currently in favor now of St. Clair. They've somewhat, they've definitely flipped the script of the first set and are now in a little bit of a lead, a little bit of a cushion. And it seems like we got the Seneca fans in front of us, we got the St. Clair fans to our right as that ball hit through and no one get their real hands onto it for St. Clair and the point will go to Seneca. Also, as you mentioned, a lot of players of other teams watching as well, so hard to distinguish which fans are which, but I do see some people in green on the right-hand side. I also do want to mention that I saw some Sheridan players, specifically Shaylen Craig and Madison Forrest in the building. So I know that the Sheridan Bruins here are here to watch some great volleyball and get ready for their match at 8 o'clock tonight against the Durham Lords. So they played in the preseason and that ball dumped over by Steele and it will get the point for the Sting. Now Davina will serve. Damini Davina puts that one right in play. Clements puts it up for DeVlue, pokes it over, and it will get down for DeVlue. A little bit of a head bob. I'll call it the Jordan head bob, if you will, for the third year. As now to serve will be DeVlue. That ball play right in play. 
up by Allerston. Misplayed almost there by Seneca, but they have a chance to play it to the back row of Davina, and that will get through the block, up by Huggins, and free balled over by St. Clair, and that would be Maleko blocked at the net by Clements. Again, five foot four with the block. Now Clements stalks. Clements will attack it, blocked at the net. Now she got a chance to set this one. Puts it up for the back row of Huggins. And almost gets that out of the heart of the defense. Passed across, that attacked over, up by DeVlute. Now stalks the chance to set it up for Michaela or Too Maleko. far for St. Clair, and that looks like it's a point for Seneca. And it will be. And now tied all up at 14 is now to serve, will be the middle steal. And now we're seeing some back and forth action here, which is what you want, I think. This is this is the kind of money that fans pay, the kind of game fans pay big money to see is these back and forth games with swings and momentum, close games, love it. That ball put right in play, Clements up, pushed a block to the net, but not enough on it there was Villaria and the point will go to St. Clair is now again to Sir. I think for the first time tonight it's Ashley Maliko. Maliko puts that one right at Divina. Put up and poked into the block and a block again at the net by Huggins and Nickel. And again, that net front presence of St. Clair in full effect in the second set. That ball for it at Divina. Up for CL, and that's a big kill for Seneca. CL's having a really strong game so far today. I've really been impressed with her. You'll probably have one of CL or I mean, Yamini the Davina. CL or Dada. Dada is also very solid as well. Any one of those three, I would say, would be a good pick for player of the game so far. Still Hug early on, though. Huggins puts that one long, and we're now tied up all up at 16. I don't think Dada's had a, exactly a great game tonight. She's been great on the defensive end. I think she's let kind of Davina and CL take the brunt of the offensive low, but Dada, I expect, will pop off in one of these sets, and again, just rolls over. Yes. That's really gotten St. Clair here tonight. That's the third serve that just rolled over, and that was BB Camilla. And that's tricky. Those, those ones are really hard to return because you think that it's going to miss. You never know where it's going to land if it does roll over that net, as that one was right in play, up for Nickel, and that will end in play for Krista Nickel. Great job by St. Clair to return that after missing the first one, just kept it in, and too much to handle for Seneca. And now Nickel, or pardon me, yeah, Nickel will serve, rotating back in is Hu Wiseman. In play right at Dada. Allerson across for CL, that one gonna be up, no libero right now for St. Clair, through the middle, Hu Wiseman, and no block for Seneca means Point to St. Clair. Excellent job by St. Clair again. Now we're back with the tie game. Two really solid ha attacks here by St. Clair Saints. And actually, excuse me, they're up 18 to 17. They are now up by the slimmest of margins. That ball put into the net, and that lead officially gone. Back tied now at 18 all. As now coming out is Stella Dada coming in, I believe, to serve will be Alexa Martinez. The Toronto native, the first year. We'll get a chance to serve. Went to uh, Bishop Morocco Secondary, Catholic Secondary School, which is actually very close to me. I used to play soccer there when I was little, so good memories for me with that school. That ball goes into the net, and the point will go to St. Clair, and Dada will quickly come back in as going to now serve is Emma Clements. The wins are native. That ball goes into the net for Clements, and the point will go back to Seneca. And a now lot of serve error, as I've noticed so far in the last five, six minutes. Definitely a lot of pass the parcel with the serve, as now to serve is CL Villaria. That ball into the net for CL, and the point will go back to St. Clair, as well as the serve, as now it is. Kiana Huggins, I expect the serving errors will now end, but 
We'll see if the commentator drinks is in full effect here tonight. <laughs> well, both these teams are in the top 10 in the OCAA's first service errors. It's eight. We have St. Clair at seven, Seneca at eight. So it's not that surprising we're seeing a lot of this stuff. Dada from the back row up by Huggins. That one, that serve was put in play, stopping the serve errors in a row. Allerston puts it up and it'll be free balled over by the Sting. Huggins, Clements for McClelo, but couldn't get that one down. Up again. Clements for Hawaisman through the block, and that will be a kill for Geneva Hawaisman. Excellent job by Geneva Wiseman. And as you mentioned, she's going to be a handful for years to come, only in first year and already really solid. Timeout taken by the Sting. They've got one more timeout remaining, down by two. St. Clair have not used that timeout. Again, opposite than the first set. They could have used both their timeouts in the first set while Seneca used one. Now we've only had one timeout used and we're almost done this second set. And you talk, we talked about how these two teams are both 14 and four, both top teams in the West and the East respectively. Second for Seneca, third for St. Clair, but tied for second with the Conestoga Condors who play next against the Mohawk Mountaineers at six o'clock sharp. And we're quick to take a look at us as only a little bit tilted down. I'll just oh, there get a little we tilt go. Up. There we go. Spencer to the rescue here. Yeah. Fixing yeah. that. Fixing the GoPro. We have this cool little GoPro that shows our faces with the TV monitor right in front of us. It's a very good system. I mean, nice to see them hem up the OC AA championships. Definitely. And obviously, you and I have had fun bringing the broadcast. Evan and I will be doing the later games as well as the games on Friday and Saturday, respectively. So. We're gonna be having a lot of fun. We already had, I feel like, quite a bit of fun here tonight, and it's gonna only I think, continue. I think so. I think so. And it's only gonna continue from here, especially when Sheridan Bruins do end up playing at eight o'clock tonight, as that will go in and play in favor of Seneca, and they start off hot out of the timeout, and now to serve is Brooke Allerston. Hopefully that's a good game. I have faith in Coach Belker, and I got faith in the Sheridan Bruins, even without a setter, as Judith Prius is not gonna be dressed with her ankle injury that they're gonna be able to do at least a somewhat of a number on the number one Durham Lords in the East. At that point will go to St. Clair is now coming in to serve will be Gabby Arbor who comes in for Geneva Hawaisman. The Payne Court native Arbor puts that one into the net. And now Seneca now down only one as Hawaiian will come right back in and then rotate out for Michaela Stocks, the libero for St. Clair, the second year out of LaSalle. As now to serve is Yamini Davina. Davina puts that one in play. That's it, Aids for Davina. Good job by Davina. Perfectly placed, and she does her little celebratory dance. Maybe too soon or not quite at, because it's 22-22 now. Uh, timeout taken by Coach L. Turk and the St. Clair Saints. How did it, was that a double point somehow? Because it was just 22-20, and now it's 22-22. I believe it was the service error by Arbor made it within one, okay, and then I missed that one. And then the point there, the ace there to Davina will put them tied level at 22. And I do want to mention, you have to win by two definitive points. And with two definitive points, if both these two teams get two more points, we got to go to extras. There's 26 right, and onwards. So these two teams, again, razor close, razor yes. thin margin here between these two sides. And I think we're going to continue that here tonight. I don't really feel like either one of these two teams are going to pull away in any one set. I think you're right. I think this could go to five sets, and we could see another one of those crazy games in the OCU, as you mentioned to me, the York U of T one that was like 50-48. Maybe we'll see a repeat of that here today. Yeah, 46-44 in favor of the University of Toronto Varsity Blues who beat the York Lions in the, I believe it was that was the fourth and final set. Right, also, yeah, yeah, which yeah. even adds the intensity of it. So what a game that was. And honestly, I'm still waiting to do a broadcast like that where the set <laughs> goes to 30 and above. That'd be a long night, though. I'd love every second of it as Gamina, or Gamini Davina will get a chance to serve. Clements 
Up for DeVlute, long, and Seneca take the lead. And now Davina will serve again. That ball put right at Stocks. Dumped over by Dada, and now Seneca are one point away from a set Victory and sending us to a third and potentially final oh, as they will take their second and last time out of the set. Uh, fantastic job by Dada. Now she's kind of turning it on as you thought maybe we'd see her do later. Again, she's third on the team in kills per set and she's been fantastic throughout this season and I expect will be fantastic latter half of this game when maybe Davina will be in the back row as we saw there with her serving. So. Definitely a good time, in my opinion, by St. Clair to try to slow this game down in their favor and see if they can ice the serve of Davina, because if this serve does go out of play or into the net, they're now only one point away from sending us to extras instead of having to get two straight offensive points, which might seem a little more difficult than just having the free serve, if you will. Yeah, I, I definitely think that that's a possibility for sure. It'll be interesting to see how Davina and, and Dada kind of spell each other off. Along with, of course, uh, CL as well, because those are kind of the top three offensive talents. And we don't want them to get too tired, right? So maybe if they get a sizable lead, they'll come off later in the game. Davina will now get a chance to serve. That ball put in play right at Huggins. Clements up for DeVlute into the net, and Seneca now are one set away from going to the semifinals and getting guaranteeing a medal game. Much closer than the first set though. Much more entertaining and enjoyable set than set number one. This was kind of more the matchup I, I thought we, I was hoping and expecting that we would see today. But now Seneca one set away from going to the semis tomorrow. I don't know if they're thinking about Humber now, but I know Humber's thinking about them. I don't know, I think Seneca's just focused on getting the set, the set and that's it. As you keep seeing us a lot here <laughs> with uh, the GoPro on. I know this was Rachel's request, so Rachel, I hope you're happy. I am happy, thank you, Spencer. Now I've, I've been on camera about <laughs> nine times more times than I thought I'd be <laughs> over today. So anyway, you're again, Seneca. This is like you're dressed up for the occasion though. I mean, eh, I think the volleyball's the event. I'm just the, the tour guide, if you will, trying to get us to our destination here, which is eight o'clock, Sheridan versus Durham. But again, hope we were hoping, I'd say, St. Clair took a set and sent us to at least four, but now they're back up against the wall. They need to get at least one here if they want to keep their playoff and I'll say metal hopes alive. Yeah. No, for sure. I mean, set, uh, share, um St. Clair, pardon me, started off that set really well, better than they started off set one, but little things kind of let the set get away from them, and I think they really have to, it's hard, easier said than done, but essentially play a perfect set if they want to have any chance coming back. And I believe that's going to start with the Vlute as well as Wiseman in the middle, and maybe even Kristen Nichols in the middle, who's also been impressive here tonight for that St. Clair squad because they really need to find an offensive punch here to get rid of this Seneca Sting team or at least get an advantage yeah. on that Seneca Sting team. But yeah. their front has definitely been impressive here tonight. Yeah, Seneca's looked really good. I mean, and this is what the St. Clair coach is talking to us about before the game, right? He basically, I, I don't want to keep harping on about this, but he was basically saying this is a really, really good team. I don't see a big dif difference between East and West, especially with all the injuries that Seneca's had. They're very talented, and it's going to be hard for us to beat them. And so far we've seen just what Seneca can do, and Seneca's probably not even at its capacity because they lost all these players to injuries for this season. Yeah, definitely a rough start to the year, if you will, for the Sting. Again, losing all those yeah. players, losing three players that we know of, as well as the yeah. injury that they went throughout this season. And one player forced to retire permanently. Yeah, had, had to retire permanently is... due to concussions. Concussions yeah. are no joke. Yeah. As we've come to find out in most contact sports, let alone a non-contact sport in volleyball. So definitely unluck unlucky for the Seneca Sting this year. But again, they still have been a 14-4 and four team. They're second in the East, and they're pushing this third-ranked in the West St. Clair team to 
the brink here tonight. Both teams, I think, are are kind of good matches, and they're you know we're seeing it's a good game. That's what we wanted, right? Pretty evenly matched volleyball, but I do think that Seneca just has a little bit more that St. Clair has, and that's what we're seeing right now. As we're gonna get back here for the third and potentially final set between these two sides, Seneca versus St. Clair. Seneca up currently two sets to no, winning the first set 25 to 20, and winning the second set 25 to 22. As they'll start off with the serve, it'll be Brooke Allerston to serve for the Sting. As now to serve for St. Clair is Geneva Hoisman. Now we're right at da, right at Davina. Allerston through the middle for Steele, but can't get that one over the net. And St. Clair again, a better start than the first, which I think honestly is the landmark right now for St. Clair is start better because they've shown they can compete with this Seneca team late. They just got to keep them within striking distance early and right now up 2-0. With this one is, of their middles. This is the start that we saw St. Clair last set, and St. Clair still ended up losing. So now I think it's about finishing strong, right? Not starting strong. St. Clair's got that down pat. That ball put across into the block. Block in the net by Krista Nichols, and the point will go to Sun or St. Clair, pardon me, and back again goes to Wiseman. And it's been an interesting strategy to start off this third and potentially final set, making their middle serve, and Ho Wiseman, who we... Normally, middles are not necessarily the best servers. Having both middles in and having that tall front at the net has seemed to pay dividends here at the beginning of this third set. Allerston puts it in the middle. Three balled over by Steele. Clement. Huggins for Devlu. Through the block and 4 nothing now St. Clair. Excellent job by St. Clair. Really, really strong start not letting Seneca get any chances at all no possession with the ball so if you don't even get the ball you can't get a point right so St. Clair is doing a great job keeping the ball Hawaisman right at Davina Allerston puts that ball up for Davina and that ball will get down for Davina who will now serve Gemini Davina was probably up for player of the year in the OCAA, losing out to Erica Dodd, but we, we are gonna see some top class volleyball players this weekend on the top eight teams. As that ball pushed in play for St. Clair, and Allerson thought to let that one fall out, but it falls in, and now to serve is Chantel Devlut. And considering all of G Ganami Davina's accolades, that is surprising that she didn't win that. I mean, when Erica Dodd plays for the 18 and 0 slash 15 and 3 with the forfeited wins, Humber Hawks, and she's probably their best player. And you know, go down the list of her accomplishments. She's also you know top seven in kills per set. She's one of the leaders on that team. I, I think you can easily make the argument. You know, and I always will hear the argument for an MVP award like it as Devu puts that one into the net. That winning is the most important thing, and when Humber's Never lost a game on the court. I think the way I'm going to say it now, they lost the game on the floor. You know, it, it's hard not to overlook the best team in the OCAA during the regular season. As now to serve is Emily Steele. That ball put in play, mishandled there by St. Clair, and that looked to be Maliko there with the mishandle. As now back to serve again goes Steele, rotated back in his CL. Bit of a comeback now. Starting to see from Seneca Sting. 6 3 after that blistering start for St. Clair, jumping out to a 5 and nothing lead. Steele puts that one right at Huggins. Clements up for Nichols. That one goes long, and there was 
no touch as Seattle might have caught a foot there and they're gonna have to are they gonna have to help her off? We're gonna see here. No, they she looks to be fine. She and looks like she's walking it off. She's good to go. Continue on in the game. Yeah, I see her rolling her ankle right there, so Obviously, might still still feeling the effects there. We'll see if it becomes a long-term ailment, kind of like Natasha Desjardins we saw in the previous game. And Steele puts that one into the net, and she wasn't happy about that serve. Now we're at Divina. Oh, right up for CL block. Return to sender for St. Clair. That was Nichols and Huggins, or Nichol and Huggins. Yeah, it looked like Viola was going to block that, but it went back the other way, as you mentioned, and St. Clair was able to make the most of that block and kind of reverse it for a point in their favor. That ball gets in, out of play. Maliko couldn't get that one in play, but Sonic almost played it anyway, so... I guess lucky they missed there on that dive. There's now again, Seneca will serve. It is Camilla. Huggins blocked at the net. Sox. Clements back for Huggins off the block one more time. That one rolls over. But for Dada, that ball out of play. It is, and the point goes to St. Clair. And Dada not happy about it. Yeah, Dada looked like she was going to make her case, but then when her teammates came over to talk to her what had happened, she realized that, okay, it was a point for St. Clair. And now Nickel to serve. Kristen Nickel in the middle. Puts that ball right in play. Allerston puts it up for Stella Dada. Tipped over. Up. Clements for Hawaisman. And again, no block for Geneva. Hawaisman means almost free point for St. Clair. That timeout is taken by coach Anthony Fong and the Seneca Sting. Is there a replay? Because we see black. What a start to the third set for the St. Clair Saints right now over Sen the Seneca Sting. 10-5 right now for St. Clair. They've doubled up on the home side tonight. And I think so far their best set, best set here so far for the St. Clair Saints. We're about to restart here the third set after oh, the man, Seneca my, timeout. I got my hair is going crazy. Again, Rachel Bishop beside me. I'm Spencer Byers, and I'll be here with you every single game this weekend. My good friend Evan Brewer will be joining me for the 6 o'clock and 8 o'clock games this afternoon. Again, Mohawk Mountaineers versus Conestoga Condors at 6 o'clock, while the Sheridan Bruins take on the Durham Lords at 8 o'clock, and then we'll figure out who plays tomorrow for the semifinals at 6 and 8 o'clock, respectively. Means I get to sleep in, if you will, as that ball goes into the net, and there will be a net violation against St. Clair. And now to serve will be Stella Dada. Never mind, she's getting subbed out, and it will be Alexa Martinez back in for her to serve. Do you not have class tomorrow either? Well, I told my teachers I was not going. So my reasoning was this. So I will not be say? going to class regardless. What did they say? Well, they just said, good for you that I had the opportunity to go to the NCAA championships. And I said, thank you. I didn't tell them what time the championships were. I just told them I was going to be here. <laughs> As Clemens puts that one up for Huggins. That one does not get down for Davina. Blocking the net by Huggins and off. CL's face. I'm hoping they are okay or she is okay. That ball pushed across and up now by Clemens for Huggins. Pushed over out of play in favor of St. Clair and... CL looks to be okay. Taking a beating, however, though, in the middle there. That's now again to serve is Martinez. Up by Clements. Huggins pushes. Up by Davina, but long, and the point will go to the away side. 
I will mention here in volleyball, like I believe most other sports, as Stella Dada gets subbed back in, the Whites are the home side. So right now Seneca is the listed home side against St. Clair. It'll be interesting to see if they let Sheridan be the home side, even though they are definitely the lower seed, comparatively speaking, to the Durham Lords. That ball pushed over, and Sox couldn't get there, and neither could Ashley. Maliko, and the point will go to Seneca. As now again goes CL Villaria. And that block of the net by Davina, and the point Great will job. go to Seneca. Great job by Davina. Nice serve as well by CL to kind of get that started. CL Villaria. The Richmond Hill, Ontario native, who's listed as a middle slasher right on my sheet. I feel like everyone's listed as just player for Seneca due to all the injuries they've dealt <laughs> exactly. with as the Blue says that one long, and now Seneca's within one. And Coach El Turk, I think, is telling his team to settle down. Again, you gotta wonder when he'll use his first time out of the set. That ball put right in, play right at Stocks. Up for Hawaisman, and Geneva Hawaisman gets back on the board. And now it'll be Kiana Huggins to serve. Another one of the teams we'll probably see for many years to come will be the St. Clair squad, as again, Hawaisman's a first year, Huggins is a second year. Stocks, their libero, is a second year. As that ball goes up for Seneca, and be hit over by Davina, and it will land out after blocked by Hawaiian off the head of Davina, and it rolls out. Only one fourth year player lifted for Seneca, and that would be Riley Davis. The and backup I, I haven't setter. noticed her at all today. She's the backup setter for this St. Clair side. Right now, starting as the first year, Emma Clements. Up by a lot Dada. Of faith in Emma Clement. It's not often you see a first year starting over a fourth year. And now. Maleko again trying to get some blocks up. Stocks now, Clements for Hawaisman. Couldn't get that one down. Allerson for Davina. Block of the net, and that will be a block Fantastic for Hawaisman and DeVlue. And this is what Hawaisman does. She leads St. Clair with blocks per set, and that is what you have to do against the Senec team, especially against Ganami Davina. Really, really solid job. I think for St. Clair, she's got to be the player of the game. You'd have to expect for sure as that ball put in play again. Allerston up for Celadada, blocked by Hawaii, but enough on it, the point will go to the home side, as now to serve will be Brooke Allerston. And that point will also go to the Saints. They're now up by four. As now to serve is Geneva Hawaisman. And back in the middle will be Krista Nickel. Hawaisman started off this set serving and was able to get St. Clair to that big early lead. That ball put right at Dada. Allerston puts it up for Davina. And Gamini Davina with the kill. Excellent job by Amini by Gamini Davina there. Nice attack. And now she'll get a chance to serve. She has very powerful serves as well, I've noticed today. Very powerful. Yeah. When you spin, you normally get a little more sauce on it. That will be an attack and a kill. I believe that may be the first kill of the night for Ashley Maliko. I believe that is Maliko's first kill as now out comes DeVlute. In for her serve will be Alexis Stewart. The Windsor native the third year. Listed libero, not wearing the libero shirt here tonight. And again, you want to talk about bench depth. St. Clair's got an extra six and some more on the bench while we talked about it with Coach Fong. St. Clair's got three, not including the rotating middles. And one of them is a backup, Ibera, who hasn't even played. 
Well, when you're already on your third string libero, safe to say the four stringer might not be that good. <laughs> and that the Niners found that out yes. with Josh Johnson. Before he went out in their playoff game, they sent back out my guy Brock Purdy with no elbow. I just now Steel puts that one right at Huggins. Clement across. Maliko couldn't get that one down. Up for CL, poked over, up by Stocks, and it's in play. Two hit by Stocks, what a play. That one hit in nice play job. for CL. Excellent job by Deloria there. Really nice attack, too much for St. Clair to handle. And now Steel again to serve. Spectra was mentioning the, uh, the Niners. He was talking about American football for people who might not know. The NFL. The NFL. NFL. And all the injuries that that team dealt with. Upsettingly, might I add. Is that, that your team? Absolutely. As Dada, two hits that ball over. Surprising she two hit that ball over. Clement, nickel, long, and the point will go to Seneca, and then they're back within one. And now Steele will serve again with a chance to tie it here, 16 all. That is an ace for Emily Steele, and we're tied up at 16. You gotta wonder if Coach Al Turk will, and yes, he will he take his first line out of the set. And again, I think a great timeout by Coach Jimmy L. Turk. Knowing that the momentum, if you, you believe in momentum, I know someone who does it, so I like to say that, but <laughs> if you believe in momentum, the momentum is all right now on the Sonic Sting side as Jimmy L. Turk takes that timeout for the St. Clair Saints now tied all up at 16, even though St. Clair has been up for all of this third set. No, I think momentum is a thing. I mean, they say, they always talk, people always mention in the NHL playoffs how it's hard to gain momentum in a long series. But in shorter sports like this, you know, set to set or play to play, I, I definitely think you can have momentum. I, I'll just tell you that a professor of mine completely does not believe in momentum. And he'll quote will be, you play to win the game. Out to you, Ray Williams. I know you're not watching, but I might as well shout you out. But <laughs> he does not believe in momentum. And I, I understand what he means when he says it even though I personally disagree with it because I feel like the energy and the pendulum definitely does shift throughout a contest and no matter what sport you're playing. And a lot of that also depends on the audience and the fans and where you're playing as well, venue, there's a lot of factors. But I will always agree with Ray Williams when he says, you play to win the game. And Emily Steele will now serve title up at 16 after the St. Clair timeout here on this third and potentially final set. But that's pretty obvious though. You'd think. <laughs> That ball put up by Huggins, Clements, up for Ashley Maleko and couldn't get that ball over. And now Seneca take their first lead of the third set. And that's over again is Steele. Steele could be another good bet for player of the game. I thought she's looked solid. That's an error there by Emily Steele. So commentator drinks in full effect again as you now rotate out. And now to serve is Maliko for the St. Clair Saints title all up at 17. Davina puts that ball in play. Put into the middle there. Maliko couldn't get that one down and Dotto off the free ball it over. Up. Passed across to Huggins. It does not get down again. Up by Stocks. Clements back for Huggins. Huggins. That was in play for Kiana Huggins. And St. Clair back in front. And now out comes Maliko in to serve for her is number 11. It's Haven Fournier. We haven't seen since the first set. Yeah, we haven't mentioned her name in a long time. That's right. The Sudbury native the first year. As the Seneca fans the front of us try to get involved. Another outside hitter listed as another outside hitter. There's a lot of them on the court today. That ball put in play. Passed across for Dada. Did not get a good run up at it. And she sends that one long. And the point will go to St. Clair. 
I feel like Dada and, and Setter Allerson have not been on the same page here tonight. Just a feeling I've gotten so far today as now to serve again will be Fournier. That's definitely a big problem because as we've talked about ad nauseum, the, the setter is probably the most important position on the team. So if you're not in sync with the setter, setter's not feeling it, that, that's a big problem. And the kill for CL there, Villaria with another adding to the laundry list of kills she's had tonight now to serve for Seneca will be BB Camilla. Camilla. Out by Huggins. Clements up for Huggins. That will be a kill for Kiana Huggins. Seventh in the OCAA in kills per set for a reason. And Seneca's coach Fong is not happy with his team's defense there as now they're down by two and might be looking down the barrel of a fourth set. Kiana leads in points and in kills for the St. Clair Saints. So very solid offensive player and she's certainly had an impactful game today. Definitely been one of the better players tonight for St. Clair. One of the big reasons why they've been able to battle back against this Seneca Sting squad. As every set, I believe, had at least three timeouts called now. As Seneca's out of timeouts in this third and potentially final set, St. Clair has got one more remaining. That looks like we've got to fix the GoPro in front of us. It looks like I skipped one intermission without having to show my, <laughs> Spence, my Spencer, mug. Spencer is happy about that. I, I was only dreaming of that moment. <laughs> as Mac came over and fixed it for us. Thanks again, Mac. As now again to serve will be Krista Nickel. No Matt, libero for St. Clair. Matt is our lovely uh, cameraman today. One of our cameramen. Well, one of our many camera people. As Stella Dada puts that ball in play and could not get that one up with Nickel. And the point will go to the sting. As now to serve is Stella Dada the fourth year. Our cinematographer, if you will. Now you're getting too technical, I think. <laughs> I'll give you camera operator. <laughs> that that one's a little too far. That's a little too far. Camera op sounds good, yeah. That ball put up for Huggins. No block. Free point for the St. Clair Saints. As now to serve will be the leader in aces per set and the setter, Emma Clements. As back in comes DeVlute. Aces leader in aces per set and in this and the assist leader as well, and she's a first year. So very impressive stuff from Emma Clement. I'm here to help. And again, the sting to serve. Valeria again to put this one in play. That one right at Huggins. Are they able to free ball it over? They are. What a free ball by Fournier. Allerston up for got for Davina and boom! What a block by St. Excellent Clair! block and the St. Clair bench goes wild. The fans go wild on that one. I believe that was a mixture of Devlude and Hoisman. Blocking Davina as well. As Huggins will get a chance to serve with three points separating St. Clair from a set three victory. Well, two points separate St. Clair from, or Seneca from St. Clair, pardon me, as Allerston up for Davina. Through the block, up by Clement, set by Stocks. Up for DeVlu, block of the net, and that will be a point to Seneca and Emily Steele. And now to serve will be this, the, will be the center, Brooke Allerston, the North Bay native, the first year. Allerston right at Stocks, her numerical counterpart. Clements up for Hawaiisman and just long. That one goes, and we're all tied up now at 22 as Allerston will get another chance to serve. That ball put in play, and St. Clair never reacted, and now. Seneca up by one, and a timeout I expect will be taken, and it will be by coach Jimmy L. Turk. 
Now one point separates these two sides, but two points separate Seneca from a set three and game victory, and they will play, the winner of this will play Humber, so that would mean Seneca will play Humber tomorrow at, I expect, six o'clock, but I don't exactly know for sure. But I know some Humber Hawks are still here watching this one, patiently waiting, if you will, for their semifinal opponent. But I think either one, Humber is happy with, and Humber knows they can take either opponent, so I don't think they're too picky about which team. I know Coach Wilkins told us before the game that they expect to be here and they expect to win the OCAA championships every year, let alone this year. So I know he's not worried about either side, but I think he definitely will be watching this Seneca Sting team and trying to figure out how he will limit this potent Sting offense. That's right. Because let's just say that it's not an easy job as again they're 14 and 4 for a reason. As again Allerston will serve. That ball put in play up by Huggins. Clements up for Maleko. Davina has to set it now. Block to the net, up by Dada. Allerston, two hits in, and a two hit point for Allerston. Fantastic and Seneca job now. By Allerston. Wow. And now one point away are Seneca from a setting game victory. That was very impressive. It's all good. <laughs> As now to serve right at Stocks. Clements, Hawaii's been off the block, up by Dada. Allerston. Davina through the block, up by Stocks. Clements, Wiseman, it's down, and St. Clair are one point away from sending us the extras. St. Clair fights back, and now's your chance, Spencer, to have your 48, 48 point game. It's coming maybe, in to maybe serve. Maybe is your chance. Gabby Arbor, gotta put this one in play, does the substitute, Gabby Arbor. Seneca Sting fans in front of us, trying to get involved. It's in play, Dada, Allerston, Davina, long, oh. no touch. There She's wasn't. saying no touch. St. Clair saying it's a point. Seneca We're gonna find out not. here. The, the referee and the line referee are gonna They're talk. They're talking. What's gonna be the call? This is the season on the line, potentially, right here. And the play to, for Seneca and Coach Al Turk. Oh, and St. Clair is irate. Coach Al Turk is irate with that call. I thought the line judge called it that way. And he's calling his team over and he wants to talk to the referee here. He wants to have this conversation. Yeah, he's very upset with that call. And honestly, he has a better vantage point than we do. I'm not sure we're gonna be able to get a replay of it. And I'm not sure we're gonna have a good angle of it, might I add, but Coach Al Turk is irate, as you mentioned, about that call. And if he's right, I don't blame him. But that looks to be a game victory for Seneca because I don't believe his protesting will no. influence the referees. And you had on call. the Seneca bench, you had Gamini mentioning that it was touched, and then you had St. Clair saying it wasn't touched. So I don't know who was right, but. And we may never know who was truly right there. I believe only the players on the floor will know who was right. I wish we could see the replay of that, actually. I'm not sure we have a good enough angle on it. <laughs> I'm not sure we have a, a good enough net cam here as Seneca win three sets to nil. They will now take on the Humber Hawks in the semifinal and both are guaranteed a medal game. We just gotta figure out tomorrow where they'll be if it's the gold or the bronze. As St. Clair, we're going back to Windsor empty handed. Oh, that's a long drive. It's a long drive home. Even longer with such a heartbreaking yeah. loss here and such a close loss to the Seneca Sting as they now get ready for the number one ranked Humber Hawks. And as Coach Al, Al Turk goes to meet the referees and at the end of the line, he's still shaking his head. He's still talking. So he's obviously very upset with that call and he's still well, voicing his displeasure. Well, when you feel like your team got gypped out of a, a, an extra point, especially a point that pivotal, which would have sent us to extras, you, I feel like you gotta fight for your team and I, I believe in that, fight for your team. I don't care if it's respectful or not. Fight for your team. 
As now they're going to be representing, I believe, the players of the game. It looks six, like number Geneva Hawaii. For St. Clair is Wiseman, so that's who I will be speaking to very shortly. It'll be Geneva Hawaiisman, and we'll see who Seneca Sting will be sending here for their interview as the player of the game. I expect it will be Yamini. You would expect. Davina. You would expect. It's so actually oh, Brooke Allerstein, okay. which I honestly do respect. She had a great game. She And she had the game-winning point. As the setter. So that is a great pick as well. As now Brooke Allerstein will also get a chance to speak with you as hopefully as well as Yeah, because you only Wiseman. got one player last time. I did not end up getting uh, the Niagara Knight setter, Montana Taylor, until the Dell about 10 minutes before the ga this game started, so... It, it all happens that way is now. And Davina does win player of the year for Seneca State. For the East. For, for, the, East. for the Eastern Conference. Uh, Dodd right. was the OCAA That's and right. the OCAA West That's player right. of the year. As now we're listing off the awards. And Brooke Alliston, the player of the game, is also the rookie of the year in the Eastern Conference. Definitely a special talent there for the Seneca Sting is setter Brooke Allerston. She's only a first North year. Eastern. She'll be good for a while. And now Kiana Huggins will become a first team All Star this season. And DeVlute will get a second team All Star vote. Obviously, Yamini Davina will get a, uh, a first team all star vote. And Ziel uh, Villaria will get a also first team all star. And Brooke Alliston also a, I believe, first or second team all star there. So Seneca well represented in the all star voting. Now, Emma Clements on the West All Stars. And Geneva Hawaiisman also. I think that's actually the all rookie team there in Hawaiisman and Clements both first years. As Rachel Bishop will make her way down here to talk to her two players. And Brooke Allison again cleaning up the awards here at the end of the game, as well as being the player of the game here today. And that will be the end of the awards for these two sides. As Rachel will now go down to speak with Geneva Hawaiisman as well as Brooke Allerston, the two players of the game here tonight. As I'll look like I'll wrap it up. Thank you so much for tuning in to game number two of our, our, our quadruple header, if you will, but uh, here at the OCAA Championships. Seneca beat St. Clair three sets to nil. Humber beat Niagara three sets to nil. We're getting you ready for the Mohawk Mountaineers against the Conestoga Condors at six o'clock sharp. And then after that, an eight o'clock start will be the Sheridan Bruins against the Durham Lords. Big game there between those two sides. And now we're gonna be waiting here for Rachel to get her interview to send us home here tonight for the three o'clock game between the St. Clair Saints and the Seneca Sting. But again, stay tuned, six o'clock. Mohawk Mountaineers versus Conestoga Condors. Both Western Conference teams, both top tier programs here at the OCAA Championships and at the Sheridan Athletic Center here in Oakville.
a player of the game interview for the live stream. Um, when you're ready, we're just going to do a player the, uh, post game interview. Okay. Player of the game, we're just going to move the backdrop over here okay. um, for the live stream. Yeah. Turn it on now. Yeah, that I also noticed while that was happening here. Like you unplug that and then you yeah. plug it back in. Oh my god, this is so BFTV trash. It's, it's not even BFTV. It's not even BFTV. <laughs> no, it, it's I don't know, is the mic not where he's mic not working? 
Hello, hello? Is it working? Yeah? All right. Is this a good angle? I am joined now by Brooke Allerston, the gate player of the game for the Seneca Sting. Really solid game for you today, and you also were named to the all-star team as well. So congratulations on both those accounts. Really tough uh, game. Three straight sets, but really close. So what do you think was the success to your team winning today and to you playing so well? Honestly, I think that we just we had nothing to lose, so we went in there and we just said like we just have to play our game, play like we want to win, put it all on the line, and I think we did that. And there was a couple times where we just had to fight back, and we were able to do that. So I think that gave us that three straight win. Yeah, there was definitely a few moments when your team was struggling a little bit, looked like you might lose. Did, was there anything specifically that your coach said?
on red, so it should be recording. Sorry?